I am leaving a ward to join the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I feel tremendously honored to have been asked to support Bill and Melinda in their commitment to smallholders, especially the women. After 26 years of living abroad, I'm returning to my own country. But I promise you this, my heart, my focus, my commitment has not changed. Wherever I am, from whatever field or platform I may find myself, I will continue to do what I can to empower women in agriculture. I leave a ward in excellent shape. A ward has funding, it has talent, and it has respect. And over the next few weeks, a new director will be selected. And while I cannot tell you who it will be, I can tell you the candidates are excellent. Award has an exciting future. Saying farewell to you feels a lot like saying farewell to my youngest child as she left home to go to the university. It was heart-wrenching. I couldn't stop crying. But I also celebrated her growing independence as a young woman who was keen to learn and to build a life of her own. An episode of my life as Mama Award is over. But the greatest happiness lies in the fact that it couldn't have been more memorable or more rewarding. I've loved every minute of it. And today, as I'm here to bid you a fond farewell, I'd like to share a few lessons that I learned during my own journey as a leader. My advice to you would be this. First, seek out the best and smartest people you can find to work with. Always look for the people, I always looked for the people who were smarter than me. That's why I went to Helga. That's why I hired Karen. That's why I hired Dorothy and so many in the award team. I am not jealous of, I do not fear those smarter than me. I seek them. I celebrate their growth and their success. It is only the insecure who feel compelled to keep others down in order to make themselves look better. Do not be that kind of leader. They're not good leaders. I have had the tremendous honor of working with the smartest, most wonderful, hardest working people in the world, the award team. And please join me in giving them a great big thanks. My second bit of advice, stay positive. Do not listen to the cynics. This is not always easy, because in our line of work, we often see sad things, poverty and hunger, and malnutrition, rough on the eyes and even rougher on our hearts. And in many cases, it is the inefficiencies and inequities of organizational dynamics that can grind us down. But we must remain optimistic about the future convinced that together we can bring about change, and I know you will. My third piece of advice, avoid mediocrity. It is a better to have achieved one thing superbly than a hundred things weakly. Be the one that does something better than anyone else. Most people are stuck on doing things the way they've always been done. That never creates the change. Be the extraordinary one. Be innovative. Dare to be different. And be the most prepared in the room. And finally, be brave. 
As women who champion for yet more women, we must be brave. As men who dare to champion the cause of women, we must have courage. One of the most important lessons I've learned working on gender issues all these years is to recognize resistance as a good sign. When you come across resistance, it means you're actually starting to get somewhere. Don't panic. Work through it. And if you bring together the smartest people, a positive vision, and work that is always of excellent quality, the resistance will fold. You will succeed. I don't know how to say goodbye to what I love. I don't know a painless way to do it. I don't know the words to capture a heart so full. It's been an honor serving you. It's been an honor serving a board. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vicky.